Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on a, a Penn Spinfisher 5 6500 Live Liner. It was sent in for service and uh, the two comments with that service, the first one was that it um, uh, appears a little grindy and the second one is that this uh, trip switch doesn't always trip uh, when it's in the open mode. So we're going to see if we can, can't take care of both of those problems today. And uh, we'll take this reel apart. We'll show you how it's constructed, how to go service a bait feeder if you have one of these, and how to address those issues. So the reel, I'm not hearing a major grind in this reel. So that generally means that it's probably just uh, missing the lubrication, it's dry, or the greases are dried and causing a little bit of a grind. We'll hope for that. And uh, we'll take, start by taking off the exterior parts, and I'm going to start by taking off the spool. As I do, I want to uh, take a moment to ask you to subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you do subscribe, please hit that notification button. This uh, channel kind of addresses a lot of things with the uh, fishing reels, how they're made, some of their weaknesses, certainly how to maintain them, and uh, some of the company histories and the like. So. Uh, I was just looking at one, for example, on Cast King. I've been asked about that one. And uh, that company was formed in uh, 2013 and began uh, sending out products in 2014. Uh, it was formed by a grad from uh, Syracuse University. And right out of school, he formed uh, Cast King. And uh, started with braided line and then moved up to the uh, ladder to where they're doing all kinds of good stuff now. And uh, we'll, we'll do a complete company history on that in a little bit. But my point is, is that uh, you can find a lot of information. And uh, if you subscribe to the channel, you're going to learn some of those things in addition to the specific reel that I'm working on and uh, how to take it apart, service it, and uh, get it back going again. All right, so I've taken off the spool. I've taken off the little um, uh, click ring and the spool shims because we're going to remove that rotor. I want to start now by taking off this trip lever arm. And bait feeders are interesting because bait feeders have a dual drag system. You have the one below, this one, which is going to control the, um, the line flow when the reel is in off mode. And then you have the other one, which is going to control the top drag when you're in fish mode. Now I like to put this one right back on again because sometimes when you're working with these bait feeders there's an alignment issue with the I gotta get this on here there's an alignment issue with the pin and if you put this back on you're gonna hold the one side of that uh, that trip mechanism in place and you don't have to worry too much about uh, getting it out of joint. What you do have to worry about is that little screw that's on the top of this. You want to make sure you have a nice home for that while you're uh, while you're working on this. So what I like to do is I like to take that piece out, grab the other piece, and put them into a parts tray, which is where I've been putting the other pieces. So my parts tray is nothing more than a fast food container, but it serves its purpose well. Okay. Four case screws now. These uh, these have got those funny machine screws. You can use either a, a, a Phillips head or a flat bladed screwdriver. And I find the first turn or two, it's always easier with that uh, flat bladed screwdriver. Then you can pretty much just twirl them out with the Phillips head. And we'll do just that. This is the larger of their bait feeders. Uh, there's a 4,000 or 5,000 and the uh, 6,500. And uh, bait feeders are in favor when you're live lining baits. For example, here on the Mid-Atlantic Seaboard, we would live line uh, bunker uh, for uh, bluefish, for example, or we would live line chunks for tuna. This one's probably a little bit uh, I'll probably, I guess you can do the yellow fin with, the, with this reel. It'd be kind of close. But uh, that's the advantage of live lining. You don't have to keep flipping your bail up and down in order to let more line out as that fish swims. 
and uh, then when you go to set it, the trip lever will go back and you'll be on top drag. And when you're on the top drag, it's a whole lot easier to uh, control that. All right, so we have the four screws out. We should be able to remove the plate now. I'm guessing this one's got a seal on it, so it may not uh, come right off. So just take your time. There's your seal. Here's that trip lever I was talking about. Now what could happen if we didn't go ahead and reinstall this again, this could pop right out. It's only anchored in by a very short piece in the case. That's controlled by a spring up top here. And uh, that spring can go flying. All kinds of things bad can happen. So it's a good thing just to go right ahead and uh, reattach that one arm. Now on the back side of this, you're going to see as you go into the bait feeder mode, Okay, so on the back side of this, when you go into bait feeder mode, tripping down, watch how that lever moves. See how it moves up. You'll notice there's no connection there to this. That's because all of that action is happening on the side plate. That lever is going to move this arm here. The arm is going to throw this point up to intersect with your uh, main gear, and it's going to push this pin here down so that it can lock in. You can see the channel that that one's going to lock into here. It's going to lock in, and when you get to the right spot, you have to find it right there, you'll see that you have a full slot here, and that's going to lock your mechanism in place. So when in the off mode, it's going to pull that out, and it's going to allow this to turn, which is the bait feeder mode, and then when it's time to set it, it's going to go back, lock this in so that this won't turn. But all of that is happening on a side case, and this is probably what's what's probably uh, tightening up a little bit here in the, uh, the not releasing quickly. So I'm going to use WD-40 or penetrating oil, doesn't matter which one, as a general degreaser, and I'm just going to let that sit there, get rid of that old grease, and set that off to the side. Now we'll come around here. We're going to spin this wheel so I can bring that. There's a clip here that's holding the axle shaft in place, which must be removed before you can remove the main gear. So I wanted to back that down so I have full access to it. And this is a good time to tell you, take pictures along the way. And if you're not familiar with a reel like this, go get the schematic for the reel. Because that schematic is going to show you the exploded view of this reel. And if you get stuck, uh, that's one place that you can reference in terms of how does this wheel come, uh, come together or come apart. The other thing you want to do is you want to take the pictures at critical junctures so that as you move those uh, pieces and parts or remove those pieces and parts, that uh, you can have a, a point to go back and take a look at to make sure that you got it right. So this is a good place. You're going to take this off. You're going to see the proper positioning of that throw arm. You're going to see how the spring rides here. And just in case things happen, and things happen all the time, but just in case they happen, you can go back to your picture. Let's say the spring popped, and uh, you're wondering, does the, the, the coil of the spring face out or face in like it's doing here? Well, that picture will tell you that, and uh, you'll be on your way again to reassembly. That's got a U-clip on both sides. We just had a question come in from Australia. The, the U-clip broke, right? And they said, well, what can I do to, uh, the, the part's not available. Uh, how can I keep my reel running? Well, the, the short answer is go find the C-clip, because that's all it is. It's really two C-clips mounted on a little bracket. Go find the C-clips, put one high and low, and uh, that should do it for you. All right, let's pull the axle shaft out. That came out nice and easy. One of the tests that you want to do in a reel does that come out nice and easy? If it doesn't come out easy, it means that this bar is or axle shaft is bent. How does that bend? Well, at the top of the stroke of a uh, of reeling, uh, if you got something on there and it's giving you enough of a fight and you lock down, it can the tension can bend that shaft. All right, 
Before I take that main gear out, I want to check. I don't have the hand strength here. I'm going to use a channel lock plier, but I'm going to use, do that ever so gingerly because I don't want to scar anything up here. I'm going to use a channel lock plier to, to get this started. Boy, that's over tightened. I want to make sure that we don't have a screw or a nut holding the main gear in from this side. Some of the spin fishers do, I believe like this 7500 series. I'm not sure about the, this series, but we're going to find out. You want to remove this cap, and we'll see if we're tied in here with a nut. We've got a nice water seal, and we're not. So that main gear will come right out, just like that crosswind block just came out there. And again, that's another reason why you want to take a picture there, because that, that uh, picture, if you weren't paying attention, this thing just popped out. Well, you can go back to your reference of that picture see how it was sitting and uh, not uh, not worry about it. Right, I'm just putting this back in. This is a water seal which is a nice idea. Put that in there. Take the cross wine block and put that in the tray. So now we should be able to remove the main gear. That came out easy enough and here's why why you want to do the maintenance and maybe why this one's running a little rough. You can see that for the most part all of the teeth in this gear, see if we can autofocus that. All of the teeth are very clean. There's no grease in it. They've all been all that grease has been thrown to the inside with centrifugal force. Well, the grease doesn't do any good in here, and it's a little bit dirty. So, between the two of them, you've uh, you probably say, okay, it's feeling a little rough. Well, it's feeling rough because there's nothing helping it to glide along here. And uh, that's part of the maintenance. It's to clean up, to check and inspect, and to uh, relube, regrease. So there you go. All right. Well, I'm just gonna use a brush here to help me along a little bit with this. I'm gonna use the brush, and I'm just gonna pull the grease out of what remains on the reel. There's some of that that kind of got stuck in the, the corners here, as I was using that cotton swab. And I'm going to wipe it down on the, on the paper towel so that it goes away and doesn't go back into the reel and it doesn't settle onto my desk. So if you have a question about this reel or any reel in particular, uh, maybe you're working on one and you're, you're a little stuck, you know, if you leave it in the comment section, again, it doesn't have to be on this reel, but leave it in the comment section. I try to address the comments in the morning uh, before I get in the shop here. And uh, if I can help you with your questions, well, I'll be happy to try and do that. And if I don't know the answer, one, I'll tell you I don't know the answer. And two, I'll try to uh, point you to who might have the answer. All right, we're continuing along now. So we have the crosswind gear we want to take out because that's going to be subject to the same. That's held in by a screw. And you want to make sure that you take this one out. Just don't give it the, the sight and say, oh, it looks okay. Because sometimes you can have dirt and grease hiding behind it, impeding performance. And I think that's probably the, the statement on this reel is it's probably just needs a cleaning, needs a re-greasing, and uh, you can get right out there fishing again. I haven't seen any damage that would say it's been grinding. I've been checking the teeth. Normally, if you check the teeth, you want to look at the, the points of the teeth to make sure they're all good. Then you want to do a side view, and you want to make sure that they're, they're all pretty much the same, and that you don't see any warping or oddball stuff going on there. So these all look good. All right. So we'll just put that back in there. We've cleaned our gears. Do the same thing here. Grab that cotton swab. Get in there. Go ahead and get that old grease off. The old grease is the enemy of the reel. What happens is you're working in a salt or a sand environment. And even though it might not get dunked in the water, while the air is carrying these micro salts and micro sands, and despite being pretty much a sealed reel, that yeah, it does get in there. And when it gets in there, the uh, problems that you have usually center around that, that sand and salt that's dried becoming abrasive, almost acting like sandpaper, if you will. 
kind of wearing down or eroding the, uh, the inner workings of it. So we're going to do this, clean it up. We'll just test that purring. It's working fine. Use my, my towel here to just dry up that little excess. And I'm going to use oil on the bearing. I'm going to hit that bearing from both sides, just kind of let it work in there. We're somewhat over greased on this side here. And I find that the factory tends to over grease this a little bit. I got the uh, got a question in earlier. What? How much is the right grease? And the 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 answer is, you know, it's, it kind of depends. But you want to get like this part. You want to get grease on the moving parts. And I grease the moving parts and I oil bearings. And the reason I do that is I don't want the grease capturing dirt around bearings and, uh, and the other thing I grease is worm drives. I don't want the grease building up, holding something that could become detrimental to the reel. Alright, we just put the worm drive back out. We'll go find that uh, screw that belongs in the middle there. And we'll go install that back because that's that mission is done there. So if you have a reel you're intimidated by, or you just don't have the time to go fix, and uh, you would like that have serviced, if you shoot me an email on my business card that follows, that's the best way to get in touch with me, and I'll be happy to provide you with real repair information. All right, let's go up top. We have a bearing up top, and we have an anti-reverse clutch up top, and uh, we have all of that stuff that we want to go address. Well, that's interesting. This is a little bit loose because I grabbed the wrong uh, the wrong socket there, and this one started turning. There should be a lockdown screw on that. I didn't see that. We're going to remove that. I set off this side. Take, take a look underneath on these. Make sure that they're nice and clean. We have a trip lever here, so we can put some oil into the trip lever. Also, on the bales, you do not need to remove the bale. Oil the seams. Oil the roller. Work it in. As long as that bale is working, you do not need to take the bale off. I get a lot of reels that come in because well, people got adventurous taking the reel bale off. The springs went somewhere and they didn't have an opportunity to take a picture and they can't understand or read the schematic in terms of how it goes, whatever. Uh, they asked me to reassemble the bale for them, which I'm happy to do, but a word of advice if you just kind of stay it, don't tamper with it unless it needs to be tampered with, you'll be okay. There's another part on reels, not this one because it has a different setup. But if you find yourself with one of the older setups on the anti-reverse that has the roller bearings exposed, and that happens on uh, some Shimano's, and it happens on Okuma's and the like, best to just leave those alone. Okay, this is the carrier. We should be able to pull this out, which we did. And this is pretty much typical of a pen uh, set up. You have a ball bearing. You have the anti-reverse clutch. There's a collar underneath that anti-reverse clutch. We can move that up a little bit, I think. So bearing, anti-reverse clutch, collar inside. This is a carrier, and there's another bearing inside the carrier. Take a picture. If you're doing this real yourself, you want to note some things. The first thing you want to note is when you do the carrier, there's two different sides. There's a wide side and a short side. The bearing goes out through the short side or the thinner side of the carrier. And when you go to reinstall, this is the bottom side. There's a gap here, a little ledge, and you need that gap on the bottom or your reel is not going to work proper. Why is that? Because the collar from the anti-reverse gear sits proud. This is the collar. And if you would put the other side of that uh, collar down the wrong way on the bearing, this will not uh, fit in there, and when you go to tighten your rotor down, uh, the rotor's not going to move. Here's your anti-reverse clutch next. This is the clutch in the rotor. I get asked a lot, how do I clean these? Best answer is just use 
a uh, cotton swab to clean the dirt out. And this is a friction device, so you don't need to use oil on it. Oil is going to eliminate friction. You need friction in the anti-reverse collar. You'll notice that when I took this off, well, two things happened. One is a metal side, and the second side is, is a plastic side. The plastic side is the downside on the anti-reverse bearing. And then we've got this. There's a little bit of accumulated dirt on the collar, and that's going to interfere with how that, um, that anti-reverse works. So make sure you clean that off to give it a good surface to mount to. And then finally, we have the last bearing on here. And again, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the other one, clean off the old grease. Now we're going to oil these bearings. These are not sealed bearings, they're shielded bearings, which means that oil will get in there. So just set those off to the side. Now normally I would take most of my parts and they would go into the parts tray, but this is the last piece you're going to take off the reel, and it's the first that we're going to reassemble. So I'm leaving them on my, my bench. When you do that, be careful, because you can see like I'm moving a paper towel here. It's very easy for that paper towel to capture a small screw, knock it on the floor, or knock it off where you put it. Well, and then you, uh, then you can do your best Sherlock Holmes imitation, go uh, try and find the culprit. All right, one more piece. We just have a little bit of grease left over here where the pinion gear mounted in the case. So we're just going to clean that up. And it's kind of time for reassembly, so first thing I want to do is put some grease onto the, the pinion gear. I'm using pen precision reel grease, not because it's a, a pen reel necessarily, that's the grease I've been taking out of this reel, but because it's a fishing reel grease. Um, if there's one thought I'd like to leave you with is I don't care too much about how you organize your pieces and parts, how you take the reel apart. Your, your particular methods, there's a lot of different ways to do this. But what I do care about is that you use fishing reel greases and oils when you go to reassemble your reel. All right, nicely oiled bearing goes on. Collar for the anti-reverse clutch goes on. Anti-reverse clutch goes on. Remember what we said, wide side, narrow side, lip, Lip goes down. That's your stack. Your stack can then get put right back into the reel. And we have our collar that's going to hold that assembly in. And we have our three fun screws. So those of you that know me and know little screws, uh, you're probably thinking it's time to go for coffee now, and I won't blame you if you do. Just come on back. This one I have a little bit of luck with because there's a little ledge there that you can kind of start to screw with. The mean little screws, well, they don't get along all that well. Again, uh, some folks have given me some fun things over the time. Special uh, shout out to Angelo who gave me this little screw grabber. I really appreciate that. Still working my way through that. It's a magnetic um, device. Doesn't work well with non magnetics, like stainless steel screws are non magnetic. But it does have a good grip to it, especially with the, the slotted. Still working my way through the Phillips heads. Okay, give that a turn. That's doing what it should be doing. Very nice. We can take the rotor and put that back on. I don't know where that uh, set screw for the nut went here. Oops. I know, I know where it went. I was kidding myself before. I forgot that I took it off. There you go. I'm going to use the deep socket because of the, the ridge on there. I'll tighten that down. It's a little cap that we had. And if you can get it wrong, you will.
tie down screw. And that completes the rotor assembly up top. Okay, we we'll give that a spin, make sure that it's doing what it should be doing. It's turning nice and smooth. I don't hear any grinding going on from any bearing noises. We'll come over here now and we'll set the, the balance of this reel up then. We want to take that uh, gear that we've cleaned. And we're going to do the same thing. Get a good amount of grease onto the teeth. Now some of that's going to spin off like before. But again, if we're hearing grinding, I'm not seeing any any dull spots or low spots on the main gear. So it's probably more that it didn't have grease rather than there were some mechanical offsets that weren't working properly. I'll take that and put that back in. And then notice I left the bearing on here. That's fine. We'll just kind of oil that bearing right on there. And now we want to bring our axle shaft. You want to wipe your axle shaft down. Now this just gets a light coating of grease because it's going to go through that pinion gear. And if you put a lot of grease on there, it's just simply going to wipe it all off. Find the flat side that has the screw hole in it, or the clip side rather, the, the two clips, that's the bottom side. Let's go insert that through. We'll get the grease going on the cross wind block. That gets mounted over the stud on the cross wind gear. If you weren't paying attention, one of the ways to figure out where the orientation of the block is, is to remember that the screw for the clip was on the left hand side. Alright, so we want to Align those two slots, one high, one low. And next we want to get that clip. Again, if this one's broken off, you can find replacement C-clips. Sometimes just as easy as your local hardware store. And that should, uh, should help you. Okay. There's a screw here that belongs in that. And we'll come over to the case there. We come to the case because we've puddled that with the WD-40. I want to move this a couple of times, make sure that all, oh yeah, that's moving nice now. You shouldn't have a trip lever issue with that. So I'm just thinking that maybe what's happened here is that the uh, the grease has just dried up or caught some of that micro sand we've been talking about and uh, caused the issue. So let's get some of that older stuff out of the way. I was just talking to one of the fellows that watches the channel, he, uh, he was kind of taking issue with the penetrating oils and that's uh, that's fine. He said in some modern reels there's plastics in there where uh, penetrating oils don't play well and I would agree with him. Uh, so he, does, he doesn't recommend using penetrating oils at all. And I don't recommend using them for lubrication. But be careful if you do, uh, if you're one of these folks that opens up the case, gives it a good blast of a penetrating oil, closes it up and calls it serviced, be careful if you find that you have plastic gears in there or uh, synthetics or things like that. It may just not be the right uh, right solution for what it is you're trying to do. All right, this was... Okay, I just saw that I exceeded time and hopefully this didn't jump ahead too far. So let's just uh, grab this for a moment and go back to this. We've cleaned the, the lower portion of the case, the one that does the work with the bell, uh, with the bait feeder trip. I've oiled it. I didn't grease it like it uh, was before. And one of the things that I was mentioning is that when you go to set this side case now, you'll notice that as you turn that axle shaft, there's a round section here and then there's an indent below. You want to turn the axle shaft until you have a full opening. This is where you'll see the full opening 
may or may not be easy to see on here, but it's a full up and down opening. That's what you need in order to load this. And this stud on the bottom of the case right here, that stud is going to be what goes into this. The reason why I leave this arm on is that stabilizes the piece that's going to go through the side plate here. If you left that off, this can jump off or it can misalign with this hole in the case and it just becomes a little bit of a problem. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can't get this set properly. And sometimes I'm noticing I'm just a little bit off on that case. Sometimes just moving that arm enough will allow you to snap that in there. You heard a nice sound snap and uh, we had a nice firm click there. So that bait feeder function is working. All right, we've got three side plate case screws. We're getting there. If you like these videos, please uh, please hit the like button on them. I don't normally ask for that, but it just occurred to me. Uh, if you like these videos, it does help. It helps in the ratings of my, my videos. It helps my channel. And thank you to everybody who's been subscribing to my channel. Geez, I'm almost at 16,000 people, and I started about three years ago. And it just amazes me, the, uh, the response to the channel. It kind of keeps me doing these. Uh, you're looking over my, uh, my shoulder in a shop where I get reels into repair. And uh, those become the subjects of a lot of the videos. To those of you that send the reels in hoping that I do a video, well, I try to do that, but I can't can't do them all. It would take me too long and I wouldn't get the volumes out of my shop, but thank you. And uh, who knows, if you send one in, maybe it will become a video. The times that I don't do the video, for the most part, is because I already have one in my library. So it's a pretty extensive library now. There's over 300 videos in there that uh, do show you a whole variety of reels. So if you uh, find yourself looking for a particular reel that you are going to try and service, then by all means, check my library. You may just find what you're looking for. All right, this is the other trailing arm. That's going to line up. Remember, we already kept the bottom attached. We have the little screw in my parts tray that goes in the other one. You're going to need a micro screwdriver for this one. Very small screw. Don't lose it. It's funny how it's the little ones that always get away. So do your best to keep that just where it belongs. Go ahead and tighten this one down all the way now. We left this one off with the uh, that little bubble. Let's see if we can't get that back on now. I now understand why it was a little bit hard to get off because that rubber was sealing it. All right, that goes on. Next up then is our shim washer and our click ratchet for our spool. And then we have a sealed slammer drag on this one for the drag system. So you would be doing yourself a, a disfavor if you didn't go ahead and uh, try and uh, take a look at the drags, make sure they're clean while you're doing this. I mean, you're spending enough time, might as well get it right. There's three screws that hold this drag down. This is put on the bottom of the top drag because less water will get in here and that will keep your drags functional longer. It will prevent some of the wear that happens when salt water get, or, or dirty water gets into your drag system and uh, causes those, uh, those drags to wear prematurely. Alright, take the small screw and everything out of that. And here's what you got. You have a HT100 drag washer in here. You have a metal washer. You have a second drag washer. And you have a lot of dirt and grease. So that's why I wanted to remove those. Use my paper towel to clean those up. Any of the dirt and greases in there, you're going to find that the drag washers just don't, wa don't work as good as they can. So, quick, uh, quick note here on this one. When you're working with your 
HT100 drag washers. You don't scrub them, don't use any greases, don't use any of that stuff. Use a, a hard brush and you'll see how it's knocking the old greases right out of there to, where you, to the point where you can see the cross hatchings on that. So that's important. Just brush it out. Use a toothbrush. Use a, uh, a bristle brush like I have. Any of those will work. You can also use a soft, if you find it's particularly stubborn, you can use a, uh, a, a little a slightly harder one. You're not going to hurt it by doing something like this. And it, uh, it will make all the difference in the world getting that dirt out of that dry washer. You don't have to replace it. You simply have to clean out the, you can see it, here's the difference right here, right? I feel like it's some kind of uh, car wash commercial. This side is clogged with grease, this side is cleaned. That's all you have to do. Okay, let's go ahead and put this back then. So we have the drag washer goes in. Now you don't have eared washers on these because these drag washers actually have points on them. And the points go in those little holes and that holds the drag washer in place. Keyed washer second drag washer and you need to make sure these land in the holes because if they don't go in the holes they're not going to be effective. Okay to set the top one then you have this little uh, tension clip here and notice how that works. That has got to land in these slots so the best way to do that is to take this off the reel load it like that and now you can install the drag washer assembly into the reel. Next you just need to align your mounting holes. Two of these mounting holes you remember have the have the set screws in them. The third one has this little spring assembly to it. So the spring assembly is going to go into the side plate here. It's also going to hold the, the tie down for your braid. There's a little hole inside of there so you want to match your hole to that assembly. Okay, just tightening up that last screw then. That's the service of your slammer drag system. Let's put it all back on. Let's see how we did. Before we go there, there should be one more up top here, so let's take care of that. Some grease in that. Let's get that off of there. So this has a lot of max drag in this reel. This is your more traditional setup up top. It's just got the one thick washer in it. I just want to make sure that you get most of that grease out of there. All right, so the, again, the reel came in for a tune-up. The complaint was a little bit of grinding. We'll see how we do. So while I'm doing this, a quick shout out to the folks that are keeping us safe during the pandemic, our first responders, all the essential personnel, everybody in uniform, teachers, postal workers, everybody is trying to help us be normal in this life. Hopefully we'll get through this sooner rather than later. All right, drag system's on. Let's go ahead and get this back on the, the reel. Let's tighten this up. Grab the, the handle. See how we did. So this has been a long video, and I appreciate you staying with it. Okay, there you go. Are we in bait feeder mode? When you trip to bait feeder mode, that means our spool is going to spin backwards. When you trip it, 
It means the spool is going to lock in. That was that tab we were showing you before. Let's go ahead and tighten down the, the, the bait feeder section. Yeah, there's a lot more resistance there. That's what it should be. Again, we'll click it. And that's it. So if there's any more kind of grind or noise to it, I'm just going to attribute that to age. That uh, This one's probably got a good workout in it. But the bearings, the gears, the, the teeth and everything, uh, everything checks out the way it should. And uh, this reel's ready to go fishing again. So I hope you've enjoyed all of that. This is Dennis with Second Chance to Tackle. Everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. And have a great day.